Hi, good afternoon. My name is Khan. Uh, what's your name? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Clarissa. And okay, what can I call you? You can call me Clarissa. It's fine because my mates call me Cla, but I feel like it's a very weird sound for anyone who is an Italian. So Clarissa is uh, fine. Thanks. Uh, let's talk about uh, your hometown or village. So, <laughs> if I ask, what kind of place is it? My hometown is a very small town in the south of Italy. It's actually on a hill, and it's a very it's a very nice town. I feel like it's, since it's really small, it's really nice if you get to visit and then go away. <laughs> it's less nice if you have to leave there because, you know, possibilities are kind of reduced because it's much as, such a small place. But it's really nice to visit, especially in the summer or in spring because in summer it gets too hot. Uh, what's the most interesting part of your town or village? The old town. Although it's not really... They could do more with the old town. It's really nice because one thing that is unique is all the buildings are completely white. So the windows, the entrance doors, everything is completely white. And it's really nice. It's a, it's a different thing. There are some other towns in the same uh, region where my hometown is that are completely white. But that's a very nice part of the of the town. They could do more with it, meaning that there's not a lot of, you know, shops or restaurants or anything it's mainly houses but it's really nice to visit okay what kind of jobs do the people in your town do it depends there's a couple companies and if you work for that company you can either work in the warehouse or in the offices if you do work in an office it's mostly import because the two bigger companies they trade a lot with china so you mainly work in the import department which was is what i was doing before moving to england Aside from that, there's the regular jobs, you know, like doctors or solicitors, those kind of jobs. And then there's lots of shops. So shop assistant, shop manager, that kind of jobs. Yeah, uh, would you say it's a good place to live and why? It, it depends. Yes, it is a good place to live in terms of quality of life, because first of all, it's really small. So you can kind of walk everywhere. So you don't have to cope with traffic or anything. Um, I've always felt safe in my hometown, even if I have to go out alone at night, if it's a bit later at night, I don't feel myself, you know, checking my surroundings or things you would normally do in a big city. So it's really nice. And it's really nice that there's this idea of sort of a community since it's really small it's like everyone knows everybody so it's kind of a big family which is really nice and it's really quiet it is a good place to live depending on what job you do so if the kind of job you want to do is something that you could find in my hometown then yes so people who work in the jobs I just mentioned they're perfectly happy because they have you know their family their house which is maximum 10 minutes drive from their workplace which is really nice I think it's really difficult if you want to do something different. Um, in my case, for instance, I I've studied languages. So there's not aside from the import jobs that you have in office, it's not a town where there's, for instance, a university. So you can you can't have a university career. And the only places where there's unis are quite far from my hometown. So yeah, it is a good place depending on what you want to do. But say if you have a one of the regular jobs, regular meaning one of the jobs that my hometown offers, then yes, it's a really good place to live. Let's move on to talk about accommodation. Tell me about the the kind of um, accommodation you live in. I work in a, I live in a flat, so I'm I we are renting. I live with my with with my partner, and we are renting this flat from a letting agency. It's a private um landlord, and we have never had any issues. To be fair, because the letting agency is very responsive, and if we have you know any problem with the house, they've always tried to sort it straight away. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a two it's a one bedroom flat but it's not a studio so there's you walk in and there's the living room and the kitchen which is just one open space and then there's the bathroom and then the the bedroom and we've been renting this place since we moved here so three and a half years now how long uh, have you lived there we moved in september 2019 so three and a half years and what do you like the most about living there really like the uh, everything that surrounds the flat I mean because there's two buses that take us to the city center in Manchester. And then there's a gym nearby, the supermarkets nearby. We have been considering moving sometimes, but in a lot of places that we've seen were kind of more isolated. So it would make sense to live in one of the places we've seen if you own a car, which we don't. And, and I feel like the 
from this flat, you can reach almost anything you need. And it's almost everything is walking distance. Even to go to the city center, it takes an hour, but you can walk to the city center if you fancy. If you have to change your accommodation, so what sort of accommodation would you most like to live in? I really like semi-detached houses. Not a fully detached, but semi-detached, I think they're quite nice. I like the fact that you have, you know, sort of like the the day area downstairs or the living room and the kitchen, and then you go upstairs for the the bedrooms and the bathroom and, and everything. That's an accommodation I really like. But I really like flats as well. So I would say if we were to move, I would like to have a flat, maybe with one extra bedroom because our parents sometimes come to visit. And I would really like to have a balcony <laughs> if I had to choose Thank you. Uh, we have finished uh, part one. Now we are proceeding to part two. And part mm -hmm. two, you will be speaking for one to two minutes. And mm -hmm. here is uh, your candidate, uh, your task card. So you can take uh, notes if you want. So I will give you one minute. You can take notes. And once we are ready, then you can start speaking. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, good. All right. Um, remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I will tell mm -hmm. you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Yeah. Um, so first of all, if I have to describe something I own, it, it's rather difficult just because I tend to get rid of everything I don't use anymore. So it's really difficult for me to hold on to something for a, a long period of time. But one thing that comes to mind is a present that my partner gave me, um, which is a watch. And the, the fact that I like is that I tried to buy that watch on Amazon Marketplace. Um, it was described as in as new condition, you know, when you can get the used ones. And when it arrived, it had some issue because it, it, it had been locked by the previous user. So I had to return it. And I said, okay, it's fine. I don't want it anymore. I, I just won't buy it. I can do without it. And I found really nice that my partner, when he heard me say that, he just went to the shop and got me one because he he wanted me to have it because he knows that I get, I'm not very patient. So if I try to do something and it doesn't go through, I'm like, okay, it's fine. Maybe it's a sign. I didn't I didn't really need the watch. It's, I don't really care. And I found really nice that he actually went to the shop and bought it from me because he knew that I, I, I want it in the first place, but then I was upset. So I wasn't going to buy it for myself. And I've had it for two years now and I I always have it uh, with me so I use it as a normal watch but it's also you know one of those watches that you can use to track your fitness your walking your activity all that kind of things so I always have it with me I have it on me I always wear it whether I'm in the gym or whether I'm just going out and out and about I always have it and it reminds me I, I thought it was a really nice gesture so do you think is it very valuable in terms of money not really. I mean, yeah, it's more, more expensive than other watches, maybe in terms of money, but it's not really in terms of money that it's most valuable. It's just I feel like more attached to it because it has sort of an emotional value that I, I, I associate it with more than money itself. So what if you lose it? Would it, would it be easy to replace it? Yeah, I think it would be rather easy to replace it just because I don't, uh, as I said, I don't really... I don't think I mentioned this, but there's new models of that kind of watch, but I didn't want to have the latest um, the latest type, so I could easily replace it if I, if I were to lose it. And I'm not really that attached to material things, which is a good thing in a way. It's a negative thing when I try to, you know, get rid of things and I want to get rid of my partner's things as well because he always says, oh, but it was a gift. And I say, okay, it's fine, but you don't use it, so let's just get rid of it. So I'm not really attached as attached to material things but yeah it would be fairly easy to replace okay so we have uh, finished with part uh, two let's proceed to part three we have been talking about things we own i would like to discuss with you one or two more general questions relating to this topic uh, mm -hmm. first let's consider values and the way they can change so in italy what kind of positions do you think give status to people 
What kind of position, as in jobs, you mean? No, what or, kind of positions, things which you own, like you mentioned the watch, etc. So things yeah. which you own. Uh, you could own a watch, you can own, I think most people I know in Italy own a car, which is an object in a way. So most people own a car, at least at least their car, but most families have at least two. Um, other things you could own are, you know, jewelry. I think in Italy they pay a lot of attention a lot of attention to, you know, accessories and fashions and that stuff like that. So most people would own, you know, maybe a bag, which is a designer bag that they received as a gift or they bought even 15 years ago. For instance, I still have one that my aunt gave me when I turned 18. So I've had it for 11 years now. So, but yeah, I think the number one thing that definitely most people I know, if not all people I know that live in Italy own is a, definitely a car. Is that a new development? Is it, sorry, say again. Is that a new development? Is that some uh, like a new trend among people just to own a car? Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's regular and normal. It's normal for people to own a car. However, I I'm mainly talking about people I know in my hometown still because there's almost no public transport. So, for instance, my sister-in-law she lives in the countryside and she would not be able to go to work if she didn't have a car because there's no trans public transport at all. Whereas in I studied in Rome and I feel like in Rome maybe people do own a car but they don't use it as much because most times because of the traffic and you have to pay for parking and everything, it's less convenient to go to work by car. You would you would rather take the the tube or the bus or any other public transport. So people do own them, but maybe they use them a bit less. Uh, what do you think of this way of thinking that I need to have a car or certain clothes to show my status in the society? I I personally think it's rather silly just because I think of objects as, as something you that has to have a purpose, right? So you use it for something. I do also realize that some people really like cars. So for instance, I could really like a type of bag or a phone or something like that, whereas people can be really passionate about cars or the different types of cars. Uh, but I think sometimes people go too far with it. So, I, for instance, it's it's a funny thing that you ask because I actually work in a, a car finance company. And I feel like sometimes people don't realize what their priorities should be because they only consider that they need to have, you know, like you said, the uh, best car to, so, to show their social status and it happens to me sometimes that they have vehicles that are quite expensive and if they're struggling I have to tell them you might want to part exchange for a car where the monthly snowman might be cheaper so you still have a vehicle that takes you where you need to go it just won't be as you know posh but most people just say oh no I like my car oh no I like my car even when sometimes they can't really afford it so I think that it's understandable, but it can really go too far and people can really, you know, lose control, meaning that they just pay attention to having a nice car. And uh, do you think this will change in the future? Will cars in designer clothes be status symbols in the same way, do you think? I think, it, yeah, I think it might change in the future just because I think they might be status symbols as well, but I feel like people will pay attention to different things. So even if you think about young people now they care about the environment they care about social issues uh because we have you know with social media and everything everyone's more informed so maybe they will think they won't think about oh what is the most um you know what, what is the latest car but they might think about what is the most eco-friendly car so they might you know remember that there are some other priorities other than the fact that it's designer and in fashion i think a lot of people now are talking about how make fashion uh, more sustainable so they're going to thrift thrift shops more rather than having you know rather than um just buying things and just get rid of things after two months because this is bad for the environment so there's a lot of talk about how make how to make fashion more sustainable so i feel like young people will be hopefully will be more aware thank you that's the end of the day <laughs> thank you i appreciate it and i will thank say you very much